Hi, I'm Angela Wolf. I'm a fashion designer and today I want to tell you how I do shearing on my tops. Sometimes it's called shearing, ruching, take your pick, it does the same thing. Like the tops behind me, I actually finished those tops first and then ran elastic thread through that bottom. Four rows on one, this one, it's quite a few rows. The more rows that you do, the better the top looks. If you just do one, it can wear out too easy. So at least do two or three rows. Here's a closer look. This is just a tank top. I finished the tank top first, and then I added this. So what's under here is elastic thread, and sometimes you can do these with a sewing machine. This one was actually done with a sewing machine. So you see the stitches on the back. That's with a very narrow zigzag stitch. I wanna show you how to do it on a cover stitch machine. A cover stitch machine actually comes with what they call a chain stitch. And you know what a chain stitch is? It stretches just a little bit. So this has been finished. This is silk dupioni, which is a little bit thicker than this, so it doesn't gather quite as tightly, but it still stretches. Let me show you the back. You can see the purple thread, which I'm using so you can see it, and then we have black, which is the elastic thread. The elastic thread stretches. That's the whole key. That's what makes it so you can get the top back on. Can you imagine if this didn't stretch, and I had to get this over my head, much less my shoulders, but it'll stretch all the way out to the width of the top, okay? So here is a top of mine. When I usually start with my tops, I finish them and I draw a line. If you can barely see that line, I like to wear my shirts asymmetrical. And why I'm telling you that is because you could stitch straight across like I did on the other tops, or it could be on an angle, it doesn't matter, as long as you do at least two or three rows. So let me show you how to set up your machine. Every machine is different, so pull out your manual because every setting could be a little bit off, but it's, you'll get the idea. So the stitch length, I'm just leaving at neutral. You can adjust that though, uh, but I like it at neutral. You could also go up a little bit more to number four. My differential feed, I've changed to two. Okay, and just play with your machine a little bit. Now, you're, only, you're doing a chain stitch, so you have one thread through the needle, and then you have one thread through the lower looper. The lower looper is where this elastic thread goes. See how it stretches? And this stuff is really a little bit of a pain. So don't worry, and when it starts twisting, don't worry about that. Just keep, while you're doing this, you need to keep your eye over here, just a little bit to watch. I've changed the setting for the thread. I've lowered it to two on mine. A standard setting would be four, so I've lowered it by two numbers. And then where the elastic thread is, I've increased that tension to seven. Four would be a standard. So that gives you a base to start with. A little tip here, when you do this, make sure you go slow. If you stitch fast, I guarantee you're gonna break one thread or the other because it just isn't natural for all this to be going through there. So you just have to kind of make it work. So I'm gonna stitch and one other trick is I hold my finger in the back, maneuvering the thread. Okay, see what I have here? It's not really gathering very much. So I wanna change this. I'm gonna change this back to three, my stitch length. Remember I told you adjust your machine a little bit. Now let's see what we have. Oh, much better. And I could even change it a little bit lower. And that really gathers it. I'm gonna go back to the middle and now I'm gonna increase this tension just a little bit where the elastic is because then it pulls it while it's running through. So don't be afraid of changing these knobs because they can always go back. So I'm gonna pull this to the side. Now I want you to look at the difference. See that? Where I started, it barely stretched at all. And then all of a sudden it started to stretch when I adjusted the stitch length. Then it started to stretch more, and then when I increased the tension, it was even more. So let's just do one more row here. And when you need to turn a corner, put your needle down. It's a little different than a serger because you only have one needle, and just turn your thread. When you line up your next row of stitching, and this is what I usually do is just keep going around and around. You can either line up right next to it, but one thing you need to do is make sure the fabric as it goes through, you kind of have to use your fingers to pull it back out. Again, it's a little tricky to get the fabric through here, especially when you have a whole top. So just kind of maneuver it through, making sure it doesn't get underneath the foot, and hold this fabric flat. 
I'm gonna stop here because this area really didn't work out so well because of the small stitch length. So I'm just gonna show you how to do one more row here. Again, you just put your needle down and turn. Kind of flatten that fabric enough. See what we're coming up with? It's stretching a little bit. Now, one thing I didn't mention, I mentioned it earlier, but you really need to keep an eye on this out the corner of your eye, because if it starts twisting, sometimes I'll have to hold this up just to get it to stop twisting. You can also, there's some embroidery things that you can put over that, but I just usually keep an eye out there. All right, we're gonna make another row. Now watch my fingers here. I'm holding this fabric out, because if you don't, then you're gonna end up stitching over the fabric and you're gonna have little pleats, and you don't want that, so. Going. So, let's see. It's gathering up, and this absolutely didn't work at all at the beginning, and it looks pretty good at the end. So that's the basic process. Let's go back to that top here and the sample. If you're gonna use just fabric, then you're gonna just continue to stitch row after row after row. And at the end of each row, leave a long tail of each because when you connect those later, you can tie them into a knot. But for me, I like to do my top all in one, so I continue to just stitch around. Although I went back and forth on that to show you, but just continue to go around and around, leave a long tail, tie a knot. Pretty easy to do.